good to have you with us once again on the program guests of the week well it's been an interesting time if you ask me the year is running to an end but then we are here the name remains abdul aziz ahmed kader welcoming you to the program guest of the week our guest today is someone who need little or no introduction of course he had his first uh, certificate in Kaduna Polytechnic, then proceed to uh, Ahmadabello University, got into the civil service of his state, Borno State to be precise, rising through the ranks, and at the end of the day, being appointed about 10 years ago today, the Shewu of Borno. So our personality, of course, like I said, is no less a personality than the Shewu of Borno, who need little or no introduction. Uh, talking about His Royal Highness Al Haji Abu Bakr Ibn Umar Garbay Al Kanemi. Well, it might interest you to know that uh, 10 years ago, when he was turban as the Shew of Bruno, succeeding his elder brother, he inherited what later become known as the Boko Haram puzzle that is still ongoing. As we speak, three local governments in Bruno State are still at least you still have Boko Haram insurgents there. We shall be talking about this. The battle of the Kanem Empire, right from the Fulani invasion down to Metatini, among others, and to the Boko Haram. So you can stay back and watch as we actually discuss with His Royal Highness in Borono, in the show, in the show of Borono's palace in Maiduguri, Borono State capital. guest for this week and interestingly we are in the capital of uh, Borono state that is my degree to be precise in the palace of uh, his royal highness Her royal highness uh, one of the major issues affecting the north is the issue of al system which we know uh, you've been at the forefront of actually uh, tackling uh, what would you say about these challenges well uh, you are welcome to my degree uh, the capital of uh, Borono state uh, normally, when we receive guests of such nature like you, first and foremost, we can tell them the history of Borno just briefly, then we'll come back to the subject matter. You see, Borno is an empire which has been in existence for over 1,200 years without any interruptions. So many things have happened to the people of Borno. We read it, we heard it, we saw it, and we are now right inside it. You see, uh, Borno has witnessed so many crises, especially the planned invasion, the Rabi attack of 1893 to 1900, a period of seven years, the Metasine crisis of uh, 1980, and now Boko Haram, 2009 dead up to now we have been experiencing and having this problem if you look at it most of these problems coming to this part of uh, the country the north east and the Maiduguri of borno most of these problems are brought and injected to us by outsiders it was never initiated by people of Maiduguri or people of borno i've talked of planning ambition i've talked of rabi rabi somebody from Sudan, he came to Borno in disguise, tried to conquer Borno and take over the leadership. He did it quite well. Seven years has been ruling Borno until when French forces came in and assisted our people and killed Rabi and appointed appropriate show to continue. Mm. Then, after Rabi disturbances, we have also this Metasine crisis of 1980. Metasine Mohamed Marwa was from Cameroon. First, it started the crisis at Kano, then down here. But with the help of police at that time, uh, Maitasine was arrested and prosecuted at Kano. And we had feast here in this part of the area. We have complete peace. Then thereafter, Boko Haram, 2009, they came. Boko Haram, we know. They came to Borno. Borno is 
known as home of peace and home of hospitality. They like strangers, they like everybody. We accommodate them, we assist them. So they capitalized on that and came to Borno. They were received and given farmland and everything. They were quite well received, not knowing that they have an ideology which is they brought and polluted into the minds of the youth and created havoc in this part of the country. But uh, we thank God. Now my degree is very peaceful. Not like uh, seven or eight years back where we are not even receiving visitors because of peer. The airport itself has been closed for commercial flight because the airport itself has been vandalized at that time. No national grid as all lines were destroyed and vandalized. No road at that time, the only road we have was from Maiduguri to Kano Road, as all other roads were besieged and taken over by Boko at that time. The border also is very porous. These criminals may come in any time and do whatever thing they like and go back to their respective places. We, don't have, we are not enjoying GSM line at that time. No proper hospital, no market, no school, nothing. But uh, we are lucky with the coming of uh, the present government, the government of uh, Mohammed Buhari. The first thing he did for us when he came was to transfer the military command and control headquarters from Abuja to Maiduguri. And lucky enough for us, some sons and daughters of Borno were appointed to the key positions in the federal government. Right now, the chief of staff to Mr. President is from Borno. The chief of army staff is from Borno. The National Security Advisor is from Borno. The EFCC Chairman is from Borno. We have Minister from Borno. We have Ambassador from Borno. And just of recent, we have Group Managing Director of NNPC from Borno. We like, we thank very much for Mr. President for all what he has been doing to the people of Borno. Honestly, we deserve it because we have suffered. So many sons and daughters of Borno are killed including some of our emirs, like here in Borno, and Borno Emirate in particularly, the Emirate which I am now holding. Out of the 27 local governments in Borno, 16 local governments are under my Emirate. Only the 11 local governments are left for the seven emirs because we, 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 have, seven, uh, we have eight emirs here, myself plus seven others, and we have 27 local governments. 16 local governments are under my Emirate. So out of these 16 local government, we have 59 district heads. We have 500 ward heads and the 700 uh, blamas, we call it ward, ward heads. That is to say, we have 59 district heads, 500 village heads, 7,000 ward heads, 7,000, comprising Borno Emirate. Now, if you look at it, out of this... Uh, 59 district heads have said almost all of them are residing here in Maiduguri because the towns were destroyed, the palaces were destroyed, burned and looted. Uh, they became leaders without territories. It's not only limited to Borno Emirate or my district heads and village heads and council members. Even some of the emirs right now, the Royal Highnesses, the show of Dukwa is right now with us here in Maiduguri, so also His Royal Highness the Sheikh Obama, they are all with us here in Maiduguri because their palaces were vandalized, looted, eh? uh, they were forced to exile themselves uh, from their domain to Maiduguri. Eh? Only of recent, some of our emirs went back, like Emir of Gwaza, Uba, and all this went back, just of recent. In case of Gwaza, the Emir of Gwaza was killed, the former one, and now replaced by his, his, his son. Most of these emirs in Borno and even outside Borno became victims of this Boko Haram in one way or the other. Like the same Friday now, I was returning from the most when they detonated bomb to me and the late deputy governor. We hardly escaped unhurt. Two weeks after, the same thing they did to Israel Highness, the Emir of Pika. He also escaped unhurt. Three weeks back, same thing to the late Emir of Kano Adobayar. 
he also escaped unharmed. So, honestly, if you look at it, the problem is not uh, only limited to something religious or so, because if it is religious, we are the Muslim leaders, and we see no reason why somebody call himself as a Muslim and attack the Muslim leaders. But all the same, uh, we are lucky, uh, and we are happy that uh, the security situation is now under control and is subsiding. And one of my problems here, Normally, if you touch me, I can talk to ours because honestly, we are in a very serious problem. That's why anybody who came to us for any interview or anything, we can talk for hours because we are having serious problems here. Right now, three of my local governments are still, yes, it's untouchable. Nobody is going there. Like Marche, you cannot get a single person in indigenous Marche there. So also Gudumbali. Eh? Marte is under Marte local government. Gudumbali is under Guzamala local government. So also Malpatori under Abadam local government. Nobody. And this local government, like Malpatori, is just bordering very close to Niger. You see? So also Marte is bordering Cameroon and Chad. Only Gudumbali is maybe in the middle. But uh, it's very unfortunate. So this, as uh, let us back to come back to the subject matter after saying something about it. This Almajiri issue is welcome development because for long, Borno knows we recognize and knows Almajiri. We have so many Sangaya school. Uh, uh, over this 1,200 years, Borno has been practicing Islam, and we have Almajiris and Sangayas. So as for Borno. We don't have any problem of this Sangaya. Okay. Sangaya, we have no problem. But we want federal government to upgrade it and improve the Angaya, uh, Sangaya system so that our people will also benefit us. They have been benefiting in other parts of the country. Your Royal Highness, I was actually going to ask on that uh, the three local governments still have uh, been occupied. Yes. Because just a few days ago, His Excellency the Governor actually told the Chief of Staff, uh, the Chief of Army Staff, yes. to actually uh, recover those uh, three local. But this, it doesn't this contradict uh, the statement by the military that they've technically defeated Boko Haram? Of course, they have defeated Boko Haram. Otherwise, we are not, as I told you, we are not even having business in this part of uh, the state. No single person is coming. To Seven years back, I don't, have you ever come to Borno? Now, just take it for yourself. We are not having business, but now Boko Haram are defeated. We are doing ceremonies, naming ceremonies, we are doing wedding ceremonies, all these things, because Boko Haram are defeated. But years back, no way. No any meeting or assembly or anything of people, because as you are sitting, they are not wearing anything. There is no identity that they, you can recognize them. They will come, just offering fire, and start killing people. My council members were killed. My district heads are killed. My village heads are killed. Pastors were killed. Imams were killed. You see? Because these people, they can just come in. Nobody will know them. They will wear the same dress. All of us are wearing like this. And they just start opening fire. Everybody will run. Yes. Yes, now Boko Haram are defeated. Even this, uh, the three local government I have mentioned, they are still under the Nigerian government. The place were being occupied by the military right now. But my appeal is that let them see the possibility of moving the indigenous, the people residing in that area before to go back to their localities as they did to other places like Damascus. Now Damascus, they have gone even almost... Uh, Bagumeri, they have gone. Uh, Konduga, they have gone. Mo Benishik, they have gone. Most of them, almost all the local governments, they have gone back to their local, except these three local governments. So we are appealing to the government, all arms of the government, the federal government, the state government, including the local government, to see the possibility of moving those people to their localities so that they will do their farming activities, their market activities, and other business activities. Your Royal Highness, one aspect uh, the Borono Empire is known for is religious tolerance. Uh, just day before yesterday, for the day before yesterday, you turban uh, Chief BM uh, Auta as uh, the Zenden Sotoma, a Christian. Uh, but people will say, I mean, Muslim and Christians have, have been cohabiting peacefully before now. What can you give as an advice for us to return to those days? Yeah, honestly, here in Borno and in Maiduguri, Maiduguri was established by my grandfather, Shaw Abakar Gerbe of Blessing Memory in 1907. Thereafter, two of his brothers also, 
became the Shoho Bono. My own father also became Shoho Bono. And I now become Shoho Bono from 2009 to date. And mind you that the Boko Haram was started before my appointment. I came in as a Shoho Bono in the 2009. And what I saw even before that, our previous leaders, they have no segregation in the religion whether you are Christian or Muslim, we accommodate it. Here in my palace, even before my coming, Outa was stubborn as a killing show in Kaduna. So when I came, just like my father, a stubborn Zanna Dujima Mandra, and the late show appointed him to the council as member of the Emirate Council. So I came and met Outa as a killing show in Kaduna. So because of his hospitality, kindness, and the way how he handled issues and how he handled people from Borno going to Kaduna and all these things, I upgraded him and appointed him as Zanna Sotoma of Borno. He is charged with the responsibility of hosting and accommodating our people in Kaduna and those people who are also going to Kaduna. This is his response. He is my representative, my permanent representative at Kaduna, charged with the responsibility of hosting our people. That is what we mean by Zanna Sotoma. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In terms of Muslim Christian relationship. Very cordial here in this palace. As we are going out, if you like, you interview them, these red cap chiefs. Some of them are Muslim, some of them are Christian. In our district heads, we have Christian district heads, we have Muslim district heads. And when I came in, even before I came in, like uh, Professor Emeritus Jida Gazama was stubborn by my late brother Joe Obono as uh, Shetima Ilmue Oborno. And here when I came in, I have also stubborn Zana Tarfaya is a Christian. Uh, Jida Gazama is a Christian. Uh, I have stubborn also Zana uh, Tarfaya as Zana Marigima Oborno is Christian. You see? I have also stubborn. Uh, Ayuba, uh, uh, national president of NLC, a Christian, as a Zanna of Borno. Yeah, we don't have such a segregation. We have many village heads under uh, Chibok and Domboa, Christians, you see? So we don't have such segregations. We, and in addition to this also, we are also giving such a responsibility to the, even people from outside the state. Right before I came now, my late brother, Al Staban uh, Abdullah uh, Adamu, Abdullah Abdullah Adamu, uh, the senator, was one time governor of Nasara State, a Zanna of this palace by my late brother, myself too also. Uh, Aminu Okene, that custom from uh, Kogi, I gave him uh, as a Zanna. Eh? And beside this, uh, one Shatima also, that judge, Shatima Abdullah. I've also given him as uh, Shetima Ilmwe of this palace is from Casina. So anybody we can. Uh -huh. Abiola, late Abiola, uh -huh, was given Shetima of this palace by the late Show Bono. After he is dead, the post, I mean, the post was given to his son. So uh, we live with the uh, Muslim and Christian. We live very peacefully here. No segregation, nothing. Yes. Your Royal Highness, we know time is fast spent because of Jumat, and you'll be doing outside just for a few minutes. Uh, your advice to the young ones, because going around Maiduguri, we see young people, proactive, uh, very agile, doing the best they can to end their living. Uh, nationally, what would be your advice to the youth? We need your assistance in this direction to appeal to the federal government and other donor agencies to give employment to these young people. Their parents were killed, they are just here dumped doing nothing only that the governor is trying particularly the former governor and the present governor zulum and shetima both of them are trying by giving recruiting and all this even employment and all these things to these young boys otherwise there are so many they are orphans most of them are women and children suffering very seriously that's why we are appealing through all arms of government i mean through everybody like media and all this thing to help and assist and air our boys to the appropriate authority to see that some recruitments are made to the people or even special recruitment in all fields police soldiers sss civil service everything to make some recruitment to give some recruitment to this uh, these children
Young boys from Porno. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You heard it there from our guest, the show of Burunu. Of course, you can say the Kanem Empire of Burunu. In Maiduguri, the state capital, Boko Haram uh, insurgency. And the show assured that whatsoever the Boko Haram, the insurgent might do, they will be defeated at the end of the day. The appointment of the sons and daughters of Burunu from the National Security Advisor, the Chief of Army Staff, the general, the group general, um, the group managing director of uh, Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, the chief of staff to the president, uh, the EMEA actually applaud those appointments. But again, we can see what the incumbent governor is doing, talking about uh, Professor Zulum Umara Babagana, and uh, the EMEA actually applauded them that. That is the size of the program today, guest of the week with the show of Bernou. His Royal Highness Abu Bakr Ibn Umar Garbay El Kalemi. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Remain with us when we shall be bringing you another interesting guest next week from the stables of Liberty Television. I said, have a wonderful day ahead. <laughs>